today we're going to talk about the biology lab. So this is about exercise number eight, and it's all about respiration and breathing. So we will be talking about the perspective of the toad since we have discussed about exercise seven, more about the toad. So we'll go into the introduction. So the introduction is that respiration, what comes to your mind when you talk about respiration? So we know that respiration is the exchange of gases between the external environment, which is your surroundings, and the body, which is the internal, since it provides oxygen and removes carbon dioxide from the tissues. So additional is that it is the hemostatic function. It is also responsible in regulating the appropriate acid-base balance of the blood. So this is what is respiration about. So let us now go and answer these guide questions found in our bio lab. Question number one. So do toads have diaphragm? If none, how do they draw air into the lungs? So we'll answer this question. Frags actually don't have diaphragm. They use their muscles in their throat sacs to help draw in air and push it back to the lungs. So there's also one thing is that also they have another organ to use for breathing, which is their skin. So the exchange of oxygen for carbon dioxide. But because of this, the skin needs to be kept moist. So usually you could see them in muddy places or in soft areas such as like muddy places, yeah, what I mentioned. Okay, now let's go to number two. So question number two. Why is it ideal to place the bell of the stethoscope at the triangle of accumulation when listening to respiratory sounds? So according to this website, it mentioned it is because of the relative thinning of the insulature of the back in the triangle. The posture triochic wall is closer to skin surface making respiratory sounds will be heard much more clearer with a stethoscope. So it's actually the reason why why there's a bell in the stethoscope. Yeah, stethoscope with a triangle of accumulation. Guys, so now let's answer question number three. So question number three is, why did the respiratory rate change after running for two minutes? So the answer here is based from another website is that during exercise, there is an increase in physical activity like swimming or running, or especially here it's running. And muscle cells respire more than they do when the body is at rest. The heart rate then increases during exercise. The rate and depth of breathing increases. That's why you could really hear, like you could already hear your breathing after running for two minutes, like you could already hear it through your ear. Thus, making sure that more oxygen is absorbed in the blood. So more oxygen needs to be absorbed by the blood and more carbon, carbon dioxide is also removed. So once you're done running for two minutes, you could really feel that you're really so tired and you could really hear the deepness in breath so, because it's your oxygen is being absorbed in your blood and the carbon dioxide is also being removed from it so it's like it's like get it's like put and then you take it but in a fast motion number four number four question so based on the experiment how does carbon dioxide affect breath holding why is this so so actually based again from another website stated that when you hold your breath the ongoing accumulation of carbon dioxide in your cells, in your blood and lungs will eventually irritate and trigger impulses from the respiratory center part of your brain. So once there's carbon dioxide being accumulated within within your blood and also in your lungs, it will actually irritate, like you'd really feel like you like a sudden pain. Like there's this pain here and then it will start to trigger your your center part of your brain to like release it at some point 
the spams become so frequent and unbearable that you can no longer hold your breath. So that's why when you try to hold your breath, you could really feel like it's painful at times and you could really feel like you have an urge to really release it. Like you can't hold it that long. So let's go now to question number five. Question number five is, what is hyperventilation? So typically, people would think hyperventilation is like you're just like acting or something. It's actually not, because according to this website, it stated that it is a condition in which you start to breathe very fast. Low carbon dioxide levels lead to narrow narrowing of blood vessels that supply blood to the brain. So that's what happens when you start breathing, like catching your breath <laughs> like that. You would start to realize that you have low carbon dioxide levels, which means that it narrows the blood vessels. Yeah, the carbon dioxide levels like it now it narrows the blood vessels that supply blood to the brain. So that's why you start to catch more breath and carbon dioxide starts to like accumulate. So it it has low carbon dioxide levels. Let's go to the very last question of this journey in exercise eight. So number six, is there an urge to breathe immediately after hyperventilation? Why or why not? So according to another website, mentioned that you breathe without thinking. It's just there. It's just really there. It's a reflex. Because your body does it for you automatically. Normally, you breathe in oxygen and you breathe out carbon dioxide. But when you hyperventilate, the carbon dioxide levels in your bloodstream will drop too low. You will notice it right away because you'll start to feel sick or you'll, feel, you'll start to feel ill. So basically, that's what happens when, when you have hyperventilation. It's way too low, your carbon dioxide. That's why you'll start to feel not good or sometimes you'll collapse. So thank you guys for watching. So that's basically it for exercise number 8. So see you in another lecture vlog.